Look at that, it does rain in Arizona. Maybe we'll get some of this mud washed off the truck. Well, it's another dreary, rainy day today here in Globe, and we actually had some sleep this morning as well. So uh, anyway, spent some time this morning working on a video, and now we're gonna head out to Roosevelt Lake, which is about 35 minutes away from here. But first Turn we're gonna take, then take the third right. First we're gonna take a little scenic drive through Globe here and check it out. It's an old mining town. And they've got some really old buildings here. 1910 jail right here. I think it's a museum now. Pretty nice downtown area though. Cafes, a trading post. Oh, and I read the uh, the Clantons from Tombstone actually moved here after they got ran out of Tombstone. The guy named Phineas Clanton is buried up here in a cemetery. This railroad bridge is cool. for visiting downtown Globe. All right, great news. The cliff dwellings are right up there and Selena's allowed to go with us. So it's perfect. It's only a half mile up the hill there. And we're gonna get to go into some real cliff dwellings. We tried to go into some in Colorado last year and everything was COVID closed. Didn't get to go in, but this year we get to go into some cliff dwellings. So excited. You don't look very excited. Oh, I'm just looking around. <laughs> I keep losing sight of them. I keep looking over there. Yeah, look at that. Oh man, that's awesome. That is awesome. All right, you coming with us? Cool, they have tarantulas out here. <laughs> Gila monsters, javelinas, all the cool animals and reptiles and bugs. And and there's a big old saguaro cactus. <laughs> this is great. And there is Lake Roosevelt. Oh, yeah, okay. oh man, the flowers are blooming here and everything. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's the first flowers we've really seen since we've been out in the into Arizona here, right? Yeah. We didn't even know this was here, this cliff dwelling place up here. <laughs> Hello. Hi there. How was it up there? That's amazing. Oh, great. Thank you. Man, this is amazing to think that these people lived here on the side of this hill, up in this crevice, in this cave. They didn't have this paved trail to go on like we do, right? <laughs> 
Selena is going to stay with Anne down there. Dogs are not allowed inside the cliff dwellings. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. Um, this you can is... go through all the rooms up here. The only thing we do ask is avoid touching or pressing on the walls. Certainly. So, yep. And if you have any questions, let me know. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Who were the Indians, the natives? Who were the natives that lived here? They don't know. They called the cultural salados. But as far as the individual tribes, we do not know. We know the Hohokams were living in the valley, thousands of them. Okay. But they had been there a few hundred years and had no shown no sign of wanting to come up here. But it was getting very crowded. It was also a big trade center. So we think that maybe somebody from up north that had already been involved in cliff dwellings came down, met someone, decided to stay, and maybe they're the ones that came up and started building up here. Um, okay. They only built a couple rooms at first, uh -huh. and then over the next 20 years, they completed the rest of the rooms. So that's why we don't think it was like one tribe, per se. We think it was almost like an apartment building, a community environment where uh, huh. anybody maybe that was sort of an outsider yeah. joined together up here. What do they date this to, approximately, do you know? 1300. Well, it's still well preserved for that many years old. Cool. I'll go explore a little bit. I appreciate your time and no information. Thank you. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much. And you could see the ceiling. I heard overheard him talking to the other people there previously. He was saying the ceiling was charred from the fires that they used to have inside the structure here. And you can see the cables that they had to use to shore that up, keep that wall from falling over. Yeah, this wall probably would have fallen over long ago if it wasn't for these stabilizers, huh? Yeah, we, when we were first in here in the 30s, we didn't need to do it, but over the next, I think it was done like in the 60s, um, that the traffic that was coming through here, we just noticed it move. Uh, so we, what we do is we hook up cameras and we watch how much they move. Oh, really? And we decide on what we need to do. Oh, no kidding. So, yeah. Huh, that's interesting. And this is made of what kind of material? Like stone and so mud? The rock would have just been what was on the floor when they came here. It's a grassite uh, type rock. And then they used a really uh, pretty sticky red clay. Okay. And they mixed a little. Uh, desert soil uh, with it, and, and that's all they used. <laughs> wow, rock, clay, and soil, and then maybe it dried in the sun, and... Yeah, and they would do it, uh, I think it was 16, they figured around 16 inches at a time, and then they'd let that dry, and then they'd put more on it so it'd hold the weight. Oh, yeah. You know, and, 
And like we said, we had five second story floors here. So that's quite a bit of weight on those walls. These uh, wooden pieces that go in between here, Yeah. what were their pur main purpose? <clears throat> they were, that's how they did the second story floors. As an example, here in the hallway, you can see oh, yeah. the poles would go across, and then the Soria ribs would go the other direction, and then another foot of clay. Okay. So this is just a hallway, but very similar to what the second story roofs would look like. From underneath, they'd be somewhat unfin unfinished, but there would be a layer of clay on top, so it'd provide a second story form. Okay, I see. So that you think that was maybe a part of a second story at one at time? At the end. Okay. Um, we think it was actually part of the entry system at first because of this doorway. Okay. Um, and then they filled the doorway in, built it up, and moved the door. So at that <laughs> point, we think they needed more family rooms and turned this into a... Yeah, they did some remodeling, right? Yes, they did. <laughs> You can kind of see, here's what they use for a, a window header. Here's a better look at how they would have constructed the, the floor system for the second floor, what he was talking about earlier. All right, that is just awesome. So happy to be able to see this and enjoy what's left of it anyway. Just imagine waking up to this view every morning, right? They're facing east on purpose. You got a good sunrise. Uh, you know, it hits here right away, warms things up. Hmm, amazing. Well, thanks again for your time. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. Well, that was quite the fortunate find. We really didn't expect this when we came up here. We were just coming up just to see the lake and just happened upon this. Basically, we saw the sign. There's actually another cliff dwelling on the other mountain over there, but uh, they have limited tours for that. There's uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and he said those tours are actually booked up for the rest of the year, the rest of 2021, due to the limited capacity. So, we, uh, once again, very fortunate to have had the opportunity to come out here and see this particular cliff dwelling. Love it. The ranger said that the lower cliff dwellings are an apartment compared to the mansion up on the hill, the upper cliff dwellings. Okay, the one that they take tours on. Yeah. Wow. They said that they estimate there were about 60 people who lived in the small one where we just were. Okay. And must be hundreds of people that would have lived in the upper lived cliff. The wow, amazing. You can see a rainbow out there right over the lake. Look at that. Wow, what a great day that turned out to be. Got to see a cliff dwelling and a rainbow <laughs> all in the same day over Lake Roosevelt. Awesome, awesome day.
down over the top. Oh. Warning, government property, mm. no trespassing. And there's the scenic view. Not bad. Wanted to get a better view of the dam. And that's what we're gonna do. It's amazing to think what it would have taken to construct one of these, all the cement that goes into that. Oh man, just the sheer manpower and machine power. It's hard to fathom, you know? Look at that, wow. All right, we better get out of here before the government comes. <laughs> Join us next week when we travel to Sedona, Arizona to visit Montezuma Castle, the Devil's Kitchen, and the Seven Sacred Pools.